Hi everybody! Today I want to introduce another basic concept, which is a little bit more advanced, but which is helpful in certain situations. So let's take a look. Um, let's first take a look at an example. Imagine you're on LinkedIn and you're searching for certain, well, for certain keywords, in my case that's coaches, and you want to save that list of profiles to your data table. By now you have learned how to do it and how to also get the CSS selectors for the lists. Now your next step would be, for example, that the bot would uh, visit every individual profile and get additional information. For example, here we want to get the current um, title, the current job position, because, you know, the tagline might have something, well, it may contain a job position or it may not contain it. That's why we actually want to get the, the latest job position from the experience. And as usual, some CSS or some web elements are really easy to get. And some elements on the websites may create problems for us. And here's one which is not so easy to get. And I'm going to show you another basic concept which will solve this specific case. So, um, to save us time, I already pre-built a CSS selector that's going to address um, this, uh, this job position. So, as usual, I go to inspect to check the uniqueness of it, go to console, I click arrow up, insert my selector right here, enter, and even though, by the way, here's just a side note, in this case I have two selectors, uh, two web elements which are shown, um, but this is because there is just one area which is also addressed, and if I do the same command and I just delete all, so I want to find out which one will be addressed if I include that CSS selector into the process website building block for the taskbot to use. Then in that case, you see that the right one is addressed. This is the kind of situation where um, perhaps with a little bit more practice, you will notice that even sometimes when you have maybe two elements shown, it's still okay to, to use that CSS selector. As long as you can double check it with document query selector without the all and see that the right cell selector is chosen, then you should be also good to go. All right, that's just as a side note. Uh, now the question is, um, we've built the selector all great, but we always want to test on multiple profiles and multiple different um, situations to see if the selector holds. And if I go here, let's do, let's do inspect also, that's a different profile. And I want to show you something. So as you can see, this profile has a little bit less information. So for example, this profile has an about section, it has an activity section, and it has experience. And this profile, however, has a little bit more. So this profile also contains a section for featured, um, and as you can imagine, there will be profiles which do not contain activity, which do not contain featured or about, so they will have less, um, less information on their profile. And this is why it's particularly important to check for these kind of situations if a selector that we've built will hold true for all kinds of different uh, profiles. And another good example for that would be Facebook pages. Facebook pages are highly customizable and every business may set it up in a little bit of a different way. So, all right, if I do this here, so document query selector all, I'm pasting the CSS selector we used. And look, in this situation, we cannot find anything. Now, I already mentioned that we have here, we see here different sections. So, uh, we can check our assumption, our hypothesis, that the problem here is that there are less sections than on the other profile. Because if we look at this um, structure and um, we hover over here, you will see that section refers to these different blocks, you know, about activity, the experience block. And so, if I now 
enter four instead of five, the right element is found. So it's really about the section. Now, normally your next step would be to, to look at this section, right? And to see, are there any attributes that can differentiate section from section? So, and usually this is what you would take. Um, but if we look at here, so section ID, we know that Ember is nothing we can take. This number will always change dynamically. There is this class, and as you can see, the class is identical for every section. So we cannot really differentiate section from section apart from simply handling it as a, as a list. And this is exactly the reason why I have here NS child, because I had no other way to differentiate one section from another other than treating it as a list and telling the taskbot, well, take section number four. But my problem is that section number four on this profile is something else compared to this profile. And um, so this is a problem. And here's what you can do about it. Now, in this specific situation, you can see that every section, so pay attention here, every section has a div inside which has a unique ID experience. And, how, and there is basically no more unique and identifiable way that we could take experience that tells exactly what we need in this, action, in this section. Here, look, recent activity. And for the about section, it also has ID about. So this is perfect for us. But now we face a problem. Now that you learned about hierarchy, you see that actually with the basics that by now you already know, you can't really address it because this div is on the same level as the div that we need, namely this one, the PVS list. This is where pay attention to the left once I hover over those selectors. And this is where I kind of narrow down to the one I need, right? To the job position. So it's right here. But the problem is I cannot they are on the same hierarchy, so there is no way for me to address it. So a thought experiment, just so that I can demonstrate this idea would be, imagine if this div were right after this section in terms of hierarchy, and this div, the one that we need with PVS list auto container, if it were under the ID experience, there would be a very simple fix to this problem um, and that would simply be instead of using the sec the treating section as a as a list, we would simply give it hierarchy as in div um, class. Uh, sorry, ID in this case, ID experience, and that's it. And as you can see. Since it would be the hierarchy, then everything would fall into, into place, so to speak. But because it's not a hierarchy, because they are on the same level, we cannot do it. So this is a deadlock. For these situations, um, there is a concept um, which uh, allows you to address siblings in the hierarchy. Um, and that is simply done by addressing by using a um, by using this sign and then um, so first of all here we would need to enter the div we need so here we would enter div uh, id experience and by adding this character here what we are telling the or how we are defining in this case the css selector is basically by saying take the uh, the next element on the same hierarchy level um as you can see here, this is not the kind of case that you're going to be dealing often with, but this can be very useful for certain situations like exactly this one. 
And if we do that, so pay attention, I took out the list, um, the list addition with NS child from the section so that I'm addressing any section which has the div with ID experience, and that's going to be always the section for the experience, right? Um, and then I'm addressing the sibling, so the div in the same, on the same level. And there I'm defining it as PVS list, as you can see here, PVS list to differentiate it from the one before, which has PVS header. So now let's uh, try it out again. And if I hit arrow up, document query selector all, and I enter that one, um, you can see that the right selector is still identified. And if I go now to the second profile, and as you, can rem as you remember, um, by treating section as a list, we couldn't get the unified, the standardized way to address this job position on any profile. Uh, and if I enter this, now, now this works here. One more note. So this sign means that it takes, this is again for a loose um, sibling. And there is also a, uh, another um, character that you need, that you use for exact sibling. Exact sibling would be plus, and that would mean that this is exactly the sibling element next to it. So it must be this PVS header. It cannot be PVS list anymore. So that would take the element next to it. But because here we actually need just to skip the one that is exactly next to it, and we need to use the div for PVS list, this is where the element that we need is hidden inside. For this situation, um, this is why I need to use uh, the other uh, character. All right, and this concludes um, basically everything you need to know about the basics of CSS selectors. And the next, uh, the next videos are going to show you different case studies. So where you will use your knowledge to build CSS selectors for different websites. And I'm going to use examples of Facebook, of Instagram, uh, of LinkedIn, so that you can practice more and understand how these different basic concepts um, are used in combination. All right, thanks for watching.